Hey, it's Ernesto, and the first time I opened up Contact, I didn't know what it was, except that I had to use it to play Contact instruments. And even when I did manage to load a library, I was still left with a lot of basic questions like, am I using this right? If you can relate, I wanna help you. So in this video, I'll show how most of you will use the newest edition of Contact, Contact 7. Before I get to the demo, I wanna quickly clear up a couple of frequently asked questions. Is Contact 7 a DAW? No, it's not. Instead, Contact 7 is a very powerful and extensive sampler. Most of you will use it to just play sample libraries, but you can also edit and create your own instruments. What's the biggest difference between Contact 7 and Contact 7 Player? This is a really common question. Here's the simplest way that I can put it. Both can play sample libraries, but Contact 7 Player only plays licensed libraries, meaning libraries that a developer paid a licensing fee for. And if you're wondering if an instrument is licensed, just check the product page for a badge that will tell you which version of Contact you need. Next, both versions come with stock instruments. Contact Player gives you a few dozen stock instruments while the full version gives you access to over 1,000 stock instruments. Finally, Contact 7 Player is free, so it's great for beginners who wanna start using some Contact instruments right away, while Contact 7 is the opposite of free. It'll be a big investment for a lot of you out there, so I recommend buying it with the Complete 14 Standard Bundle or above. Now it's time to show you how to use Contact 7. It's pretty simple. There's two ways that most of you will use it. The first way is to use an instance of Contact for individual instruments. This shouldn't be a big surprise, but uh, many of you probably already do this, but let me just walk you through it. This is how the new Contact 7 looks when you first open it. There's this browser window that shows you all the instruments. And one of my favorite new features is how you can get a quick demo of each preset just by clicking it. If you like what you hear, just double click it to load it up. And then you can play it, you know, however you want with MIDI. Whenever you pull up a Contact instrument, there's two main parts. This top section with these controls here and the instrument controls at the bottom. This top section is in every single contact instrument. The most important things to pay attention to are the MIDI channels here. You'll usually want this to be set to channel one or Omni. There's some other basic controls like solo, mute, panning, volume, and tune. It even tells you how much memory a library takes up, which I'll show you later how to greatly reduce that memory use. Below these control is the instrument interface. And these controls and interface will be unique according to whatever library you're using. For example, with some instruments, you can drag MIDI out of it, or you can drag samples directly into contact. It all depends on the instrument you're trying to use. Here's a few other settings that you should know about. To pull up some more menus and controls, just click this button here. What I like to always have on is the keyboard. This helps show how the instrument is mapped across the MIDI keyboard. The other thing you may want to pull up is the outputs. This lets you see the levels of any instruments inside of Contact. Not very handy when you only have one instrument, but it becomes much more valuable for the other main way to use Contact. Now the next way to use Contact is by having multiple instruments inside one instance of Contact. So instead of having a bunch of contacts spread throughout your project, you'll just have one instance that will hold a lot of instruments, which is then routed across multiple MIDI ins and multiple outputs. So you end up with something like this. Here, Contact has four different instruments, but it has these different MIDI channels assigned to each. So when I select MIDI channel two, it's gonna play the instrument assigned to channel two. And then what I have set up here are MIDI clips in each MIDI channel. When I play it, all the instruments inside Contact will play all at once, but they'll all play different MIDI notes. If this method interests you, there is a bit of setup involved, so you'll probably want to make a template or some kind of preset that maps this all out. And the way to set it all up is very DAW specific. I don't want this video to be 30 minutes long and I don't want to leave you hanging, so I'll have a playlist link below to show you how to route contact inside a bunch of different DAWs. Some of you may be looking at this thinking, whoa, that looks pretty cumbersome, and you're right, it is cumbersome, but there's two main benefits behind this method. The first is to save on RAM, and the second is for convenience in some cases. And I guess the third benefit is if you simply prefer to use contact this way. But here's my take. I would try the first method using individual instances of contact for each instrument. I find this workflow to be a lot easier and a lot more intuitive. And the RAM that you do save usually isn't significant enough, but if you really wanna save on RAM, here's a much easier and more efficient method, and that's using the purge button. This may be the most valuable thing I share in this video because you'll be doing this a lot. First things first, please store all your contact libraries on an SSD. It can be an external, or internal SSD, but this is where all your contact libraries should live because it just helps everything load up so quickly. 
Now to show you the radical way that the purge button can save on RAM, check this out. We have this library inside contact and it takes up a few hundred megabytes, which is a lot for a single instrument. I really wanna reduce the space, it's taken up on my RAM, so I'll click the purge button and now it's significantly reduced. What happened is that before the purge, contact loaded all the possible samples of that instrument on my computer's memory. After the purge, we are only loading the samples that are used based off my MIDI clips. So as I play more notes at different velocities, we can see that RAM usage increase, but it's always gonna be much less than when it first opened up. A small disclaimer is that this method works with most libraries, but not all. But I recommend always just trying this out. It took me forever to learn about this, and the moment I started doing this, I fell more in love with Contact. Now, if you don't already have Contact 7 and you wanna get it, I would strongly recommend you getting it with Complete 14. I have a video here that'll help you figure out which Complete 14 bundle is right for you, so be sure to check that out. Thanks for watching, later.